a, a lot of the frustration and issues uh, from residents are around uh, clear communication and being informed. That, that's, that, that, that's really the, the, the key crux of, of, of the issues for residents. It's, it's not knowing a time frame for things, mm -hmm. like you know, a land settlement, um, what's going to happen with land issues, when there's no, what we're going to tell you in, in two to three months or uh, seven to six months, th there is no key time frames for it. Same in terms of, you know, uh, when your insurance company's going to get involved. Some insurance companies are very good, other insurance companies are not so clear. So it, it's that clear communication of what's going on, how it's affected in different areas. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of inconsistency in some of the rules. I guess it depends who you're dealing with. You said earlier before that there's some people from um, September 4th who still haven't even been assessed yet. Yeah, that, that is correct. There, there is a wide spectrum. Um, there's people who were just about to be assessed uh, when, when the second earthquake hit and um, are now looking at another possibly up to nine months before, before they are reassessed. There are other people who are classed as the double whammies, um, and they have been assessed a, a, a lot, a lot, a lot sooner. I mean, the one thing, the good thing is e EQC uh, has uh, been able to react a lot quicker this time, so so that has helped the situation. But there is a full spectrum of people who haven't even been seen yet from the first quake. How are people coping with the stress and the pressure of that, and some people being displaced, homeless, jobless? What, what's this? I think, uh, bear in mind, I mean, we've now for eight months been undergoing aftershocks and, and life in a, in a city which is damaged by earthquakes. Um, there is a lot of stress on people uh, and families and uh, again the, the lack of clear information adds to that stress. Where can they get that information? Is Cancern expected to address some of the information gaps out there? So one of the things Cancern prides itself on is, is taking uh, the information from the grassroots and being able to um, pass it on to the appropriate authorities or the appropriate groups um, from the bottom to the top and then as well as feeding that information you know the answers that we get back from from the different organizations right back down to the grassroots and that help, does help allay fears um, but you know there's there's a, a de desperate need for clearer communication and um, more information. Mm. Can you give me some examples how you've been able to sort of troubleshoot some people's um, situations? For you? Yeah, definitely. Like um, there has been um, the odd case where there has been a stalemate between two parties, and what we've been able to do is bring that to uh, the attention of, of the appropriate body, and 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 they have acted on that. Um, just for some, for the benefit of people outside of Christchurch who might not know what some of the logistical, um, practical daily struggles are, can you maybe you, uh, let me in on your own personal situation? Well, I, I suppose I, I, uh, if I make it more more general the, and give you a wide spectrum, there, there is people who are still, you know, at night time if they want to go to the toilet, they're going to walk down to a portal room. Uh, you know, th there's people who have got chemical toilets, you know, and, and that is their toilet. Um, getting to work, you know, uh, driving around the city, you know, it, it's not as easy as what it once was. Um, you know, the roads are still damaged. Um, some roads are open, some aren't. So, you know, it's, it's, those are some of the issues that people are facing on a day-to-day. -day, some of the basics.